I really enjoyed your note. Hello, good morning, happy Friday. Uh, not so happy, based on Netflix share response. The anxiety, I think, is the idea that they just won't report monthly subscriber gains or losses. Why? So I think it's a great point. I mean, first of all, they're not going to do it until the first quarter of 25. So all of this year, we're sort of safe. Second, I'm fairly skeptical they can do this because other than Apple, uh, which I do not think Netflix is Apple, um, every company that has a subscriber-driven business reports subscribers because we calculate value on a per-subscriber basis. So I don't know if they'll actually do away with it, even though they've said they will. They're pretty good about listening to feedback. And Wall Street's feedback is pretty negative about this, like, opaqueness that they're adding to the fundamentals. So, but anyway, it's not an issue until the first quarter of 25 at the earliest. Um, I also think people are, are having issues with sort of below, like a negative sub no, add number compared to first quarter. They don't like that. And also the, uh, the guidance for Q2 is a little light compared to consensus estimates. So I think people are worried about a slowdown in revenue growth. I, I, I like the phrasing opaque. I mean, Netflix management's thing has always been like, judge us on these traditional financial metrics, you know, profit, basically. What I found interesting, if you look at the 9.33 cust uh, million customers they added in the first quarter, th there's a story behind it, right? Which is that the password crackdown seemed to bring to them people that were forced to sign up for their own account, and they were willing to do that. What was your interpretation of that number in the moment? So I also think that what's happening is when someone calls to disconnect because they're angry that they're going to have to buy, you know, buy a whole another subscription or that the price is going up with the ad driven tier, instead of canceling your $15 subscription that's on its way to $20, you can go to a $7 per month tier. You just have to take ads. But right now, huh, they tell us at Netflix that they don't have that many ads, that they have way more supply of ad units available to sell than they do have demand for ad units, which means the ad loads here are very minimal, like one or two ads um, an hour. So that's a pretty good deal for consumers right now because you can pay $7 a month and get almost no ads in what's called the ad tier. So three years from now, there'll be five minutes of ad loads. But today, there's like one minute of ad loads and you're paying $7. I think that is helping their reported sub number Although it's hurting the art, what they, what they call ARM, what the rest of the world calls ARPU, because the average, the, the subscriber that used to disconnect and go to zero is now going to seven dollars. So it's pulling down the average revenue per subscriber as people sign up for these ad-driven tiers. Uh, just a quick update for our Bloomberg Technology audience, Laura. I, I just wanted to talk about the shares really quickly. We're down more than eight percent off session lows, but. At one point, the stock was on track for its biggest drop since April of 2022. Let's see where we end up at the end of the day. I don't understand why we don't talk a little bit more about the strength of the content slate. Um, I have just finished watching The Gentleman, for example, the, the TV or series adaptation of the Guy Ritchie film. Uh, thought it was good for what it's worth. But, but content-wise, continuity-wise, Netflix seems to be OK. Um, why are we not discussing that more? I think because Wall Street sort of feels that's their, that's their, they make widgets, right? Their widget happens to be content. We assume they're going to do a good job of that with the $17 billion a year that public shareholders give them. We expect them to maximize the quality of that $17 billion of content. We sort of think that's their core business. Like, just because Apple makes great phones, like, the, you, you don't give them kudos for that. Like, they better make great phones. Otherwise, people aren't going to keep the service. So I think that's their core business. And I also think Wall Street is skeptical of hit-driven businesses because you may love The Gentleman, which I also thought was excellent content, but somebody else wants to watch The Kardashians on a different service. Like, you know, what quality content is to different people is different. Um, and so, you know, what we care about on Wall Street is what is what's happening with the return on investment for the 17 billion of content. And I will tell you, sports is really important to Wall Street. And I think it's really important to these streaming services. So they are doing more with sports. As you saw on the call, there's a lot of talk about this big fight that's coming up. They've now signed up WWE to do live sports. Let's call it entertainment sports. Yes. Every week for next year. That's a big deal. They are softening on sports. But they also said they are not going to spend any more money on sports. They're going to have to, the sports fees will have to come out of the $17 billion in total content costs. That's really important. Uh, I think they need to be in news also.